My life flows on in endless song. Above her servant he shone. I hear the real, the far off him that hails the new creation. How can I keep from seeing? This song is my personal anthem. Throughout my life, singing and opera has been my solace. Becoming an opera singer has taught me so many important life lessons, including confidence and loving myself for who I am and how I look. The wonderful thing about being an opera singer is you are allowed to be unapologetically yourself when you sing. See, the voice is a unique instrument because no two voices sound the same. The color and timbre of our voices is determined by our face shape. This is why family members often sound similar, but even then, you don't sound exactly like your parents or your sibling. Your voice is yours. Singing and confidence are also incredibly connected. The voice simply won't work if you hold back. You have to let your sound go and let your breath flow in order to create a proper sound. This is a really vulnerable feeling, and it can be frightening if you're holding on to anything painful. But vulnerability is also an amazing feeling, because when you are true and honest with yourself, you are able to love yourself in ways that you never thought possible. Now, of course, I didn't always love myself or the way that I looked, but my story really begins when I was seven years old and I first started singing in the Winston-Salem Children's Chorus in North Carolina. It was through this children's chorus that I got to sing in my very first opera, La Boheme, when I was nine years old. I was a loud, outgoing and fearless child. I often came home with report cards saying that I talked a little too much in class. <laughs> so singing was the ultimate form of expression for me because I was able to be free and open with my voice without fear of judgment. Now, around the same time that I was discovering love for singing, I was diagnosed with a jaw disorder. Over the next eight years, I would battle the balance between loving myself for my singing and hating myself for my jaw disorder. This culminated when I was a teenager and I was bullied for how I looked. As I grew older, my skull grew, but my jaw stayed the same, and that gave the appearance that I didn't have much of a chin. So the bullies called me the very original name of no chin. <laughs> Good one, bullies. <laughs> but looking back, I think part of the reason I was a target was because I was a girl who was loud and opinionated. I didn't always agree with what my classmates thought about politics or religion, and at first, I wasn't afraid to argue. But I quickly learned to be silent to avoid ridicule, and that crushed me. Throughout it all, I would turn to music. I would come home after a horrible day of being teased, and I would sing. I would blast music in my room and sing, or play piano and sing along with that. So throughout my teenage years, opera was becoming my refuge. I was a really good singer. And on stage and in high school choir, I was accepted for who I was. No one judged me for my looks, but instead I was welcomed with open arms because of my voice. Opera allows you to be loud. Classical music is the only form of singing that doesn't require amplification. We learn how to project over a full orchestra into a hall using nothing but our bodies, our breath, and our resonance. This is an incredibly empowering feeling, and especially for someone like me, who was being silenced in school, forced to live inside of my shell, I felt so powerful knowing that I could fill a room with my voice using no help from a microphone. Finally, when I was 16, I had surgery to correct my jaw. 
I already knew by this point that I wanted to be an opera singer, so my family and I worked really closely with the surgeon to make sure that the surgery didn't affect my singing in a negative way. Now, as you can tell from my x-ray, this was major surgery. It involved total joint replacement and facial reconstruction, and I still have all that metal except for the braces hidden in here. <laughs> But despite this major surgery, I wasn't afraid at all because all I wanted was to look normal so I wouldn't be teased anymore. But of course, the one thing that I wanted was the last thing to happen. I didn't look normal until about a year after surgery, when all the swelling went down and I finally had feeling again in my face and chin. But the thing that kept me going was, as always, music. Because after surgery, I finally had the space inside my mouth to access the resonance that I needed. So my voice was clearer, more present, and more beautiful than ever before. And I finally began to learn the love, to love the way that I looked, because I knew it was because of my face that I had the sound that I had. The fact that I have really big eyes allows my expressions to be seen from the back of a hall. And my small, oval face creates perfect resonance for my own sound. Opera is incredibly inclusive. People of all shapes and sizes, of all colors and backgrounds, sing opera. And music is a universal language. Every single culture sings. I could walk into a room full of people who speak completely different languages. But if we can read music, we can sing together and create memories that transcend language. I finally fully came into myself when I went to college. I ended up going to Ithaca College in New York, where no one knew me. No one knew about my surgery or my jaw disorder or how I looked before, so I didn't have to let my jaw define me anymore. And I didn't allow myself to be silenced anymore either. I sang my heart out. I spoke out about my beliefs and opinions, and I learned the amazing possibilities that being an opera singer opens up. Because on stage, you can be whoever you want to be. On stage, I was a boy, or a witch, or a queen, or the woman that every man was in love with. And the best part of this is I was able to find a little bit of myself in every single character that I played. Now, of course, opera isn't always easy. It's a really competitive business, so we face a lot of rejection and criticism. But over the years, I've learned to block out the negative voices and to trust myself, and that has made me stronger than ever before. Now that I'm an adult, my passion has become introducing people of all backgrounds to opera. I've decided to become a mentor for my students, helping them learn to love themselves, just as I learned to love myself through music. When I began teaching, I started to notice some common ground among my students, especially my female students between the ages of, say, 10 to 18. Oftentimes, these girls and young women would come in, and they seemed afraid to make a loud sound or scared to make mistakes. And I quickly saw my younger self in a lot of them, the girl whose voice had been taken away by teasing and ridicule. I knew that in order for them to sing the best that they could, I had to help them learn to be confident. But I also decided that this lesson was, in a way, more important than their vocal technique. If I could help these girls really love themselves, to not be afraid of making mistakes, but to let their voices go, I could really make an impact on their lives. In addition to teaching, I also do outreach shows with Arizona Opera. So we go all over the state of Arizona and perform for all different kinds of schools, ranging from Title I schools to private conservatories. But every single child, regardless of their background, leaves those performances changed. It's amazing to see these kids learn what I have learned over the years, that being an opera singer makes you a superhero. We are forces to be reckoned with when we sing, and no one can tell us to be silent again. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing?
Thank you.